guys and welcome to Chateau. Get the tunes on, pour yourself a glass of wine and let's get into this box. We've got a cracking menu in store. Now, first things first, take your meat out of the fridge 30 to 40 minutes beforehand. That brings the meat up to temperature so that it doesn't get a shock going into the, the hot pan, okay? So remove your peppercorn sauce and your meat. I think it's a very diligent move to get your oven tray and pat dry the, the steak before we go to cook it. Now, if you've bought a Chateau box from us before, we treated the steak a little bit differently, okay? So try and pay attention because it, this isn't as it normally is, okay? Like that there. Now, you'll see that in your box, you receive a lovely little salt blend. Now, before we cook steak, we want to season the outside. I got a fantastic a word of advice from one of my mentors when I was younger. He said, salt before cooking draws out the moisture, salt during cooking seasons the food, and salt after burns the tongue. So you have your pan on a medium-high heat, and I think a tiny touch of oil. What you don't want here is you don't want smoke bellowing out of your kitchen. What you do want is you want a nice hot pan, you want to be in control, you want a nice fluid movement. Okay, so when you place the steak into the pan, place it away from you. And what that means is when the oil is here, you're going to lower it in away from you. So there's no, no hot oil splattering back in your face. And that's what you want to hear. You want to hear a sizzle. You don't want to see it stewing in the pan. While this is cooking, I'm going to get the peppercorn sauce and place that into a small container. To the back of a knife, press that to the back of the, the bag, cut the bag, the wee corner off there. I'm going to squeeze this into a pan. So the sound that's happening in that pan, if you've had a Chateau box from us before, you'll know that that's called the Maillard reactions. And that is that, that act of caramelizing that meat on the outside, okay, with heat. So I like to see the ends as well, because that's normally the little chef's hair, isn't it? Lovely, okay. So as you can see there, all coated round, Lovely caramelised colour, and we're ready to go. That's, that's good to go right into the oven. 180 degrees. So I'm gonna cook it medium rare, so I'm looking for somewhere between 12 and 15 minutes, okay? Now the beef has been in the oven for its allotted amount of time. Now look at that, that's what you're after. That, the caramelised all the way around. I'm going to allow this to rest in the pan because I hate washing up. I'm just gonna leave it to the side to rest. Okay, so our steak has rested. So what you want, you want to take a sharp knife. What I like to do as well, I like to have a little tea towel here just to, just to dab any excess liquid onto it. So what we want to do is we want to slice, slice this into six slices. If there's anything else that's left over, any ends, then that's the chef's treat, okay? So using a sharp knife, you can use a serrated knife, but using a sharp knife, you place your fingers here. I'm using long movements. Now that's the ruby red colour that we're after. Nice, thick slices, don't be shy. That's it there. That's exactly what we're after. Beautiful. So that's your steak there. And what you want to do while it's on the towel, you want to place this, the salt straight over, okay? A little trick is to place your knife underneath. Arrange the meat here. Okay. Serve your sauce. You can serve some on the side. But I like to serve my sauce over the top. And there's your steak with peppercorn sauce. Enjoy. Okay, moving on to the next side, we have our, our ox cheek cauliflower cheese. Now, I'm just gonna be serving for one, so you don't need to heat it all up. If I'm 100% honest, you could heat this up in the microwave, but we are not going to. We're going to respect all of our garlic cheese. I'm just gonna cut into it and remove some of this here. Now, the cheese we've used is Scottish provenance, 
We've used, we've braised some ox cheek down, made it all sticky, and that'll go fantastic with our garnishes. So we'll just keep that to the side. So the easiest way to heat this up is just to press it down slightly, just to separate it, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little touch of water to the tree. That'll help it steam, okay? Now when it's hot, obviously, cauliflower cheese is outrageous. I'm gonna put some tin foil over the top, okay? Just to keep that steam in and keep it hot. Now, tin foil has two sides. We have a shiny side, and we have a dull side, okay? We want the inside to heat and not to deflect the heat, so we want to have the shiny side facing the produce, okay? Just like that. Nice and tight, so that no heat escapes. And again, place this straight into the oven. 180 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes until fully cooked. So remove your cauliflower cheese from the oven. That should be piping hot in the centre. If it's not, feel free to put it back in. What I'm going to do for an added chef's touch is I'm going to place it into a serving container and then place that back into the oven. What that's going to do is that's going to caramelise all of the cheese on top and give that bubbly appearance. So place into your serving container those florets of cauliflower. Such an underrated vegetable. It's actually a lot more versatile than people give it credit for. But still, I don't think you can find a better way than filling it with cheese sauce. And those big chunks of ox cheek, which we have braised down in a sticky beef jus. Lovely. Okay, I'm going to place this back in to the grill. So I'll put the cauliflower cheese into the oven um, simply to gratinate the top, just for, for appearance purposes. Um, that'll take about 10 minutes. Cauliflower cheese has been in the oven for that extra 10 minutes, just to gratinate the top. Oh, that's, look, that's looking good. And that is what we're after. Look at that bubbling, hot, melting, cheesy, with those sticky, chunks of beef throughout. Enjoy cauliflower cheese with braised off sheep. This is the beef bourguignon baked potato with uh, a chive creme fraiche. Now there's a couple ways that you can heat this up. Now, I wouldn't mind if you place the whole thing onto an oven tray and placed it in. What I'm gonna do, and I'm going to remove just the potatoes, just as so. And I'm going to pl place them into the oven and I'm going to heat up some of the garnish separately, okay? However, feel free to just heat it all up in the same tray. I hate washing up and that would be quite messy. So these would go into the oven at 180 degrees for about between 15 and 20 minutes. Right, so the rest of the garnish I'm going to place into a small pot just so I can have a little chefy touch. So in Bourguignon, the traditional garnish we've used is the is mushrooms, little baby onions, pancetta, lardons. You'll you hear the phrase lardons a lot. That, all that really means is, is just, it's a cross-section cut of pork, of smoked pork. It's just a big chunky bit of bacon, really. Put this on, just a low heat, just to warm through. Okay, because there's a wee bit of sauce, a wee bit of Bourguignon sauce there. Um, and, I, and I want that to bring the temperature. I'm just warming through the garnish that's already in there. Everything's already cooked. You don't need to stress yourself. You've still got the music on, you've still got your glass of wine. So remove your potato from the oven. And that's piping hot inside. Look at that. Lovely. Chives. Have... So when, when a bit of heat touches chives, they come alive. They fill, the, they fill every room with, with, that, with that heady smell they've got of intense onion. Just reminds you that summer is here. So I'm going to serve this onto a plate. So I separately heated up the garnish. I'm going to place this luxurious garnish onto the plate. Don't be shy. Now the Scots are famous for our hospitality and we want to keep that. That's lovely. right in the middle. And there you go, there you have 
your beef bourguignon baked potato. Enjoy. Now for the dessert, um, this is our take on strawberries and cream and also cheesecake. Everyone loves cheesecake, everyone loves strawberries and cream and as soon as strawberries are in season, we, we've got to use them. Now, not every strawberry that comes off the plant is beautiful and ready to be picked. So the, the ugly ones, or the ones that don't quite make the cut, we make into a little, a little jelly and we bind the good crushed strawberries. Okay, and we set that underneath a lovely vanilla cream cheese and then our almond strudel on top. Simply remove this from the fridge 10 minutes before you intend to eat it. That releases all the dormant flavours. Take the lid off and serve, and that's you. Enjoy. So there you have your Chateau Xbox. Um, enjoy. Oh,